What's up, Fight House fans? We are back with episode 27 of the Fight House podcast. It's me, Jason Sutcliffe, with Tristan Ketty. We got a great show for you today, four great guests. We're going to kick things off with the Colombian queen, Sabina Mazo, coming off her first round death blow to Lindsay Williams at LFA 23. It was, one of, it was just ridiculous. Internet. The second one, back to back. The Reddit, the Reddit community absolutely loves her. Oh, I guess they do. They put her, they put her <laughs> back, they put the, the gifts back to back. Everybody, right? Yeah, it's just like, uploaded like crazy. Look what she's done. Yeah. It's like two of the cleanest head kick knockouts I've seen. She's doing it like like that's you know, just another day at the that, office. That, like rigor mortis sets in that Crazy. devastating KO. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Then next up we got fifteen and one Co- Cody Stamen. He's getting ready to take on Tom DeCanewa. Uh that's gonna be a great show, uh, great fight. Both fifteen and one. You gotta think that that's a uh, a promotion for whoever wins that one's and it's yeah. probably stepping to the top ten, you'd have to think. UFC two sixteen. Um, tough it's gonna be his move to ban and wait. We're gonna talk to him about the wake up, what's going on, you know how what why, you know, fifteen to one. Yeah. You usually you don't see guys jumping divisions. When they got a record like fifteen, 15 and one, right? Um, and then we got Volcan, the king. Full, Full king. king. Full king, sorry. <laughs> no time. <laughs> hey, that's my guy, man. I, I, you know, I originally talked to him when he was with Titan, so I, I, it's been so cool to like uh, follow him and have these conversations with him after fights and before fights and, and just kind of follow that journey. Uh, uh, I almost feel like honored to kind of like to have that, oh, that access to him. I'm excited so, for the interview for sure. i uh, really, really looking forward to talking to Vulcan, even just because I, I, I genuinely like Vulcan. I've had, you know, half a dozen conversations with him. He's a really cool guy, so yeah. I'm really looking forward to talking with him. And Emmanuel Sanchez is going to join us. He's going to close out the show. He's getting ready to take on Daniel Strauss, former featherweight champion, Bellator 184. Um, huge fight for him. Huge fight. you got to think of uh, title shot ramifications. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I would think so. Um, you know, look – Stylistically, it's a tough match. You know, uh, two very different type guys. Yeah. But uh, one, you know, it's very much the bull in the matador, right? Like it, yeah. it's kind of what it is. You know, and we had Daniel Strauss on the podcast last week, and he had some choice words. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I don't know if we're gonna get that from Emmanuel. He, he does, he's not the same kind of. Yeah. He doesn't carry that same energy, but he can fight. Yeah. He can fight though. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll find out. We're gonna find out what's going on. That's October sixth. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna want to tune into that one. That's a great card. Uh, so stay with us. You know we got four great guests. We're going to be back with Sabina Mazo, and uh, we're, we're it should be a good one. We're going to talk to her about knocking these girls out. Pating. Let's get it. Let's get it. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back. We have Sabina Mazo with us, fresh off her vic- uh, fresh off her victory over Lindsay Williams. Sorry, how you doing, Sabina? What's going on? Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, I'm feeling great, no injuries, and just relax and move forward training. Sabina, you did it again. Two. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling after after the victory uh, to, to win like that again? I feel great. Um, I mean, I, I always look for, for what I have to work more after fights. You know, I try to improve, so I feel pretty good. Um, I feel. I mean, it was another knockout. It, it mm-hmm. was. It was perfect timing. Everything, but uh, you know, now it's time to to keep on improving. Definitely. How was your preparation for this fight? Everything. Though I know the weight had seemed good. You were right on point. Uh, how was everything for you? Um, I did a lot, a lot of uh, different things this camp. Uh, I trained a lot of wrestling. I trained a lot of jujitsu. Uh, I mean, also my standing. But um, I tried to always being like improving in every aspect of the fight so um yeah i didn't really just work on one single thing i tried to you know work out and everything and, and when i fight i feel ready in every part of it um it, you know it's definitely a solid performance were you feeling any pressure when you came in coming off the like the, the knockout it went viral like everybody knew who you were were you feeling any pressure to kind of provide that performance again no i i really didn't feel that pressure because uh you know it's it's part of it uh i mean if it went viral or not it's it's just part of it i right. just go there and do my work so i don't feel that kind of pressure what do you feel before the fight like when the, you know you're you're there fight night whatever you know you're, you're you know you're about to walk out what is your feeling like i'm i'm happy you know it, it's time to to show the work that i've been doing all these months and i really feel like happy of, of doing what i, I like to do and, you know, I feel like I really want to kill someone. So it's like <laughs> perfect. 
Yeah. <laughs> I love you look so nice and you say it with like this big smile. You're like, I want to kill someone. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Um, how hard is a switch up for you? Like a last minute switch up? Because I know she she took the fight kind of late. No one's thinking like eight days or something they were saying. Um, what's that like for you? Uh, like she took the fight on uh, eight days notice. You, I, th- I thought somebody said, I thought I'd heard them say that the night of the fight. No, no. Oh, I we, apologize. We already knew. Oh, okay. We we knew like uh, maybe one month, oh, one okay. and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, the preparation was good then. There was no last minute switch. I'm sorry. I must have heard that wrong. I apologize for that. It's fine. Um, you know, one thing I noticed in the fight, I thought it was interesting. I wanted to ask you about when you came into the stare down with her, you were staring like right at her and she broke eye contact she was looking at you and then she looked at the referee for like maybe a second or two and then looked back to you is that a tell for you i just it was something i noticed and i don't know i was wondering if you noticed things like that is that a tell for you i I do notice you know but i'm more focused in that moment to just like i told before kill that person you know i'm focused just in 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 that person i don't care if, if they're afraid they're not afraid if they're focused in another thing i'm just focused on one thing and it's right there. So, um, yeah, but I, I did notice. Yeah, it was something I noticed, too, because I was like, I wonder if she, I'm like, I wonder if she feeds off something like that, because it was, it was kind of something that caught my eye. Um, you know, when you came out, you were going through your feeling out process in the first couple minutes and, and you could see her kind of moving around and seeing what she was going to bring toward uh, towards you, I guess. Um, she landed a few solid leg kicks. Did those have any effect on you at all or? or? No, I mean, they were good um, middle kicks. They were fine, but. I blocked them all. I I feel good. No, I didn't really felt it. You know, no, no pain in the moment and not right now. So, okay. uh, but they were good. You know, she was she was trying to to get me there, but I got the the solid base and guard. Yeah. Um. Was there anything that she did that surprised you in the first couple minutes, or that took you a minute to adjust to? I knew she was gonna be a strong fighter, always mm-hmm. going to the front. I knew that I, I analyzed that from her last fights, uh, so it didn't really surprise me. But she was good at it, you know. She was a strong fighter, and um, I like her her style, you know. You know, she she was uh, seemingly finding a little bit of success, um, trying to pushing you up against the cage. It seemed like that was going to be her strategy to really like close the difference and try to make it like a really ugly fight up against up against the cage. Was that something you were worried about coming into that she was going to try to stall out like that or like you know kind of control you? For like a I was decision? not worried because um, I knew she was uh, that kind of fighter that yeah. does that. So I prepared for that, you know, and, and I knew she was trying to do that. So what I work on is like working against those type yeah. of things. So it, kind of, it didn't really surprise me, but she did it well. You know, she always tries to, to do that to her opponents. Um, about halfway through the first round, uh, she starts to throw leg kicks and, and body or right body kicks, and you're countering them at that point. You're landing pretty solid straight right hands. Um, it seemed like that kind of was the beginning of the end. Did did you feel like when you started to land those shots, like she was wilting a little bit at that point? Yeah, you know, I, I was kind of analyzing her, and um, I saw that the punches were landing, and that's a point where, where you start seeing, uh, like, the holes, you know, you start seeing the spaces. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, after after those couple punches, I could feel it, you know. Um, but I was not just worrying about the kick, you know. Right. I was not like, okay, I'm waiting for the moment. No, mm-hmm. it just came, you know. It, it's part of, of the game. Well, you know, I it's funny. I was going through your your social media stuff, and I saw a video. You were pretty much working this exact combo um, with your coach. It was you were throwing like a one-two, and then you were coming with a right high kick or a left high kick. It was like like everything was ending with a high kick. Is that based on like your body, like th- those things? Because you seem to have like a really long legs. Like I'd have never seen you in person, but from what I could tell, you seem to have like a longer leg reach. I think than most, um, which kind of makes you dangerous at at a, at a distance that really only you can operate at with some of these other girls is that something you work into it like using those advantages like the, the uh, physical advantage yeah of course I, I try to use that from my body I'm I have pretty long legs and yeah. um, I use them you know in training and not only high kicks it really helps me for the distance and also in jujitsu so uh, I try to work on with that base of my my body and um, yeah it was totally part of the camp yeah, it was, uh, it was, when I was going through it, I looked and I was like, "Wow, it's like almost picture perfect." The same as the same as what happened. Um, also, I, I I noticed 
when I, I pulled up the other knockout, the, the Jamie Thornton knockout, and I was looking at them, and it was almost identical, like nearly identical, like how they entered, how they they exited, the space, the distance. It was almost completely identical. But I noticed one thing you did was you kind of threw a punch, but it looked like it was gauging the distance almost. Like you didn't throw it almost like to knock her out, but it was almost like, is she out of the range of my punch? Because then I can, you know, throw this. Is that something you do? Like explain how you get these girls to move into that space. I mean, it could be like a, a fake punch, like you just said, or landed a really hard punch, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as I get the distance, it's, it's correct for the kick, you know, it, it feels good for the kick. So, um, yeah, I mean, this time it was not a hard punch that last time right. it wasn't either, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I try to get the distance and, and when I feel it, I can kick it. The, the kick for sure is going to land. Well, yeah, it, it is. It feels like for sure. It feels like you've got this down to like a science almost like when you're watching. It's like, did she just do that again? Exactly the same way. <laughs> like, it's like she did. You know. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, you watch the, the uh, flyweight title fight. Uh, Andrea Lee fought Jamie Thornton. What did you think of that fight? Did you have a chance to watch that fight? Yeah, I, I, I could watch it. It was a good fight. Uh, Andrea is a really strong fighter, too. That's why she has the the title and uh it was good you know she has really good submissions also really good striking and uh yeah it, it was it was really good fight um now the thing we talked before and you were like hey you know i'm taking my time i'm 20 i got school i got all these things but if you keep knocking people out like this people are going to come calling you're not gonna be able to take your time sabina if you keep doing this right they're gonna come say okay come with us now you're, you're ready um where do you feel like you sit for this time like a title fight with andrea lee and, and necessarily because i i can't imagine there's too many people that are sitting higher than you right now with the way you've handled things yeah well a lot of people want to watch that fight, you I know. I want to watch that fight. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm I'm taking the time, you know. In this moment, I just want to focus a little bit more on on, on improving because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things I, I for sure have to work on. Right. And um, when I fight with her, I wanna I wanna win, you know. I don't want to sure. give the fight for decision, you know, because because she has a belt in this moment. So uh, as soon as I, I accept that fight, it's because I'm going for sure for the victory. And uh, I'm preparing for that, you know. I don't know if it's going to be the next fight or maybe two more. I don't really know when it's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, it, it's one of the um, possibilities that I have. Also, you know, the UFC is a possibility. I mean, that's about to start kicking off. You're going to have a champion soon. They're going to be – all that stuff is going to be in, the, in full swing. Um, I know you have school and you have things that you have on the go, personal other things. Is that a jump you're willing to take right now, or is that something you would really rather just leave for a little bit, like you said, and get better with your technique and, and things like that? It, yeah, I, it is a step I'm thinking about, but not right now, you know. Um, the good thing is that I'm young and I still can improve a lot, you know. And yeah. uh, I don't want to be, like, just uh, a good fighter, you know. I don't want to be a good fighter. I want to be the best of the world, so... I, I just make those kind of steps when I really feel that I'm going to be good and excellent fighting. So um, for now, I'm good here in LFA, and um, but in the future, for sure, I, I can step there and, and, and fight for the title and fight all those amazing fighters. And you know, I guess in the other, on the other end of it too, you know, you you get two knockouts like that, the whole world knows your name. Now there's other girls that are like, hey, I want to fight Sabina. I want to fight Sabina. You know, now at this point, do you have to recognize a little bit that that you do have this attention and start being a little bit more selective with the fights that you do take? Yeah, I mean, I have an awesome, amazing team. They mm -hmm. always help me to like choose the the fights and and everything, but. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, if it's the opportunity, I can take it. You know, there's no easy fights. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's the, like world champion or, or, someone that it's getting there. There's right. always like it, it, for me, it's always an important fight. So of course I'm selective, but um, I mean, if it's if it's good for me, I'll take it. It's good for business. It's good for business, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you always expect to win, but have you surprised yourself? I was surprised. Well, yeah, of course, I'm. I'm always surprised because uh, the hard work, you know. Not even because I can't believe I, I, I did it, you know. But because it's amazing to see all the hard work you put, yeah. like all those months, all the you know sacrifices you did, and 
in only one round, you know, even in three rounds, it's it's really crazy how you put all the, that effort in, in, in one fight. Definitely. Listen, I want to congratulate you on a great win. It was a great performance, uh, super entertaining, and I wish you all the best, and I hope to see you back in the cage soon. Thank you so much for giving us some of your time, Sabina. Thank you very much. Awesome interview. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thanks. All right. Bye. That 125 division is really shaping up for the future. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. She's like, I'm at, like I want to see a fight with her and Andrew Lee. Now, that's yeah. probably just me being a little bit selfish because um, <clears throat> you're you a know, fan. I want to see that fight, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I'm a fan. But she, I think she's right. I think she's right. I think, I, I think everything she said was a completely fair assessment yeah. of the situation. Like, just take your time, relax. This is not a rush. You're 20 years old. It's similar, actually, to the guest we have on later at Vulcan. You know, he, he, right. he, he, I mean, well, except that he was the, further along in no, his he career. Is, he is right? further along. For, no, for sure. But yeah. I mean, it's the same. It's the same situation where it's just like, am I taking too much on at a too early time? You know what I mean? And, and you keep winning, and you're like, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't. But these fighters are so smart. They're so intelligent now that they they understand. It's like, oh, I might be, I might right. be on a crazy run, but it just takes one. Everybody, well, everybody loses. And the people around them are seasoned in this business now. You got to remember, this is a relatively new sport. Yeah. So when people are doing business for the first ten years, like a lot of this stuff is new. Yeah. You know, it's it's just uh, you know. It's true. It, so now there are people are understanding like how it works and the importance of like you know not just taking every fight and showing how tough you are, but being a yeah. little bit more selective. Yeah. And, you know, and, and recognizing what you're worth. Yeah, not everybody can be cowboy. Just yeah. Take every or, fight. Right. And well, cowboy. But uh, but then again, at some point, cowboy probably was a little more selective. Yeah. On his way up, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody, uh, or somebody forced or him. Or somebody. To. Or yeah, right. Or somebody yeah. was right. Now yeah. it's just that he makes enough money he can fight and he's happi with that. Her mentality remi- it reminds me of Joanne a little bit. She's like kind of nice when you see her in the interview. She's right. super nice, and then she goes in there. She's just an absolute killer. You know? Did you see how happy she like how nice she <laughs> looked? <laughs> when she the, was like, and I just want to kill her, and I'm just like, huh? It's like it's like a it's like a from horror movies. You know what I mean? That the, the, the nice she's little just nice, the, yeah. You know? just like this so is what I want to do though. Yeah. At this point, this is where I get to. You know, which is hey, I gotta respect that. You gotta train for months for to do your business. You know. Yeah. Um, but again, we're seeing those skills too. That like that one weapon thing going on you know in mma as well right <laughs> so in full circle she she's an absolute animal and, and, and on top of that the internet just loves her it's crazy this the, the reddit community all kinds of different community mma communities on the internet they just love her to death. people love knockouts bro that's true especially especially <laughs> clean ones really yeah. clean ones. super clean head kick yeah. knockouts people <laughs> yeah. love that go figure you know true. go figure listen we're gonna we're gonna be back we're gonna have cody stamen he's uh getting ready to compete at UFC 216, big fight coming up. Um, really looking forward to it. We're going to be back. He's going to be with us. We're going to uh, find out how he feels about everything going on and what's coming up, and uh, we'll see what he's got to say. Stay with us. We'll be right back. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with Cody Stamen. He's got an upcoming bout against Tom DeCanewa. I always have trouble with that one. Coming up, UFC 216 on October 7th at T-Mobile Arena. What's going on, Cody? Welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. 100%, man. How's everything going? How are you? Uh, it's you know, it's, it's been great. You know, I'm uh, camp starting to wind down. Yeah. I think I kind of got all the hard work behind me. So now it's just kind of drilling and chilling until, uh, you know, fight night. Sweet. And, and uh, how was the preparation? Does everything go smoothly? How's weight? All that stuff is going well? Weight, uh, weight's exactly where I wanted to be. So... Uh, you know, that's that's always like kind of a big stressor uh, yeah. in fight camp, you know, getting the weight where it needs to be. Uh, everything, everything's been perfect. You know, like it's it's different for me now because, uh, you know, before I, I worked a little bit part time, did yeah. some other things. But now, I mean, my full focus is on fighting. So, you know, I don't have any I don't have any distractions or anything that take my time anywhere else. You know, my whole my whole focus, my diet, everything is on point. So, uh It'll definitely, yeah, it'll definitely show October 7th. Must be a beautiful thing, eh, to be able to just focus on fighting for the first time and not have all those other pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long time coming. You know, I feel like this is uh, this is something that I knew was going to happen, but, uh, you know, I thought maybe it could have happened a little bit sooner. Yeah. But, you know, now that I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful. You know, uh, how, does, how does just that fact alone, just not having to have a job and being able to focus the way you are now, um, how does that change things with training camp? If I feel like that would change everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I, I would say mainly uh, I, I can I can move around more. You know, I have more time to to go to different places and get different looks, and uh, I can organize my training better. You know what I mean? To where 
you know, if I was working 20 hours a week or something, because I, I never worked full time. I've always, yeah. you know, been like a part time worker, full time fighter. But, you know, now I have more space between workouts. Uh, you know, um, everything's a lot more organized Yeah. Uh, to where it was like you kind of I had to, you know, work around a work schedule and now I don't have to do that. And that's man, it's it's brilliant. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a life changing thing. And I'm, I'm really happy and fortunate to be where I am. You know, um, the first time we saw you in the cage, you know, it was short notice. You were making your debut. A whole bunch of things going on. Now, like you said, you've had the chance to, to just focus solely on your training. What what difference uh, can we expect to see in you in the cage uh, the second time around here? Well, I've been to be a lot sharper this time around. You know, like yeah. uh, that training camp, I mean, a literally eight day training camp. I mean, that's not even a joke. I I was basically uh, you know coming out of a, like a like a six to six to eight week uh, you know rehab rehabbing a, a minor injury so I wasn't in the gym I was mainly just healing so I didn't really and normally I'm always in the gym so you know any other time besides that specific time it would have been I would have kind of known how much gas I had in the tank in that fight I really didn't so you know this time around you should expect that you know I'm gonna be able to push a push a pace my techniques are gonna be a lot sharper and uh, you know you kind of get a, a better idea you know what I'm all about there's a lot of things that you know, a lot of explosive stuff that I couldn't do in that fight that I'll definitely be able to do in this one. And also, you know, you're making the move back to Bantamweight. I know you floated around pretty much your entire career. You fought at Featherweight and Bantamweight. Um, what makes Bantamweight the better choice for you? I mean, you've well, been I successful mean, I, at both. Well, I just, I've seen the size of the, like, the frames that a lot of guys have at uh, 145. And, man, a lot of them are real tall. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, a tall guy by any means. I'm, yeah. I know. Five six, and uh, you know you get some of these guys that are five eleven, six foot tall that have really big frames. You know that that gives a that gives a guy a hard time, you know, especially on your feet. That I have to work a lot more to get in on those guys. Um, so at at, at bantamweight, I feel like not only do I have uh, a little bit of a you know I still have the speed, I have the speed to compete, but I definitely have uh, you know the strength and the, you know, the explosive power that I can you know I can kind of dictate where the fight goes. Um, you know, speaking of the, of the fight, you know, Duquesne wise, tough guy. You guys are both fifteen one. This is like a, like a defining. Not, not. You know, you have those moments, those fights that kind of fit in moments. They're big. Yep. You know, they get you to that next yep. level. They do that. And I feel like this is that. Both you are fifteen and one. This is a big fight. Um, how do you feel about the matchup when you look at them skill for skill? Uh, you know, yeah, definitely a tough guy. I won't take anything away from him. Uh, very skilled, skilled fighter. I mean, deserves to be where he is. Uh, but you know, I look at him like. Uh, like I never, I never really look into the hype. You know, I don't look into a guy's hype because I fought other guys that you know had a lot of hype around them, and I, I focused on that in the past. You know, I fought a guy when I was four and zero, that was five and zero, and everybody talked about how strong he was and such good grappling, this, this, and this. And I kind of like started to believe the things people said, and it kind of made me a little bit timid come fight time. I ended up knocking him out, but it took two rounds for me to realize that you know, like, hey, this guy isn't uh, you know what everyone said he is. You can beat this guy. You know, going into it though, you know, I was I was unsure, and and now I look more at the guy and who he's fought, and uh, you know what he, what 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 he's about, what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are. Right. I don't I don't look into the hype, and I think that um, you know Tom has never fought anyone like me. Um, definitely never fought someone with the wrestling capabilities that I have, and also the striking capabilities that I have. I think he's fought good strikers, uh, you know, decent decent boxers. Uh, but he's never fought a well-rounded guy like me. So, you know, as much as he's a test for me, I'm a test for him and uh, coming out with my hand raised. You know, I feel like a big part of your game, and, and it probably brings you a lot of success when I was watching you, is how good you are at transitioning from your grappling to striking. Yeah. Um, like you throw a couple short hooks, you're in there, and then bang, you know, it's like this real hard power double. Um, do you feel like it, those transitions are, are going to set you apart kind of in this fight, like being able to seamlessly move through your, your disciplines like that? Yeah, see, uh, it was it was explained to me like this. Uh, you know, it's like it's like building you know a perfect cake. You know, you have all these different ingredients, you know, that make up like a, a fighter, but you have to add the right amount of these ingredients, and then you got to put them in for the right amount of time. So, in my martial arts game is all based around being able to blend all the things that I know and do well uh, together, like fluently. You know, so for me, being able to you know go from striking to grappling back to striking, you know, if that's not working, uh, you know, in those little, those little, those little glimpses of, of, in a fight, I feel like that's where I, I have a huge advantage because I, I drilled that a lot. 
I drilled up positions that maybe guys aren't used to. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm really good at making people fight the way I want to fight them. Um, you talk about, you know, looking into a fighter, looking into what he does, looking into who he's fought. What are you expecting to see in the cage from Duquesne Wall on October 7th? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I've watched a lot of his fights, uh, you know, dating back probably two or three years. Yeah. Um, and he's changed a little bit. Uh, he used to come out in an orthodox stance. Now he comes out in a southpaw stance. But he switches. He's definitely right-handed. Um, you know, one, one thing that I think he always does is he's always aggressive. I mean, he always comes forward. Uh, he punches and kicks well. Um, but... I fought guys like this before. So, you know, when his name was brought up and, um, you know, originally his, his name was brought up and my manager talked to me about that fight. And I was like, I want that fight. And the UFC actually gave it to someone else. And a day later, for whatever reason, that guy didn't take the fight. I was the guy that already, that already said yes. And, you know, when I heard that I didn't get the fight, I felt I was pretty, you know, I felt, uh, like I just missed out on a huge opportunity to, to do something great, to really put my name out there. And then I ended up, you know, getting the fight and, and now I'm, now I'm here. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to go in there and mix it up with this dude. Where, where do you feel like, uh, your, like your advantages, where do you feel like you're going to have the biggest advantages that are going to tilt this fight into your favor? Uh, you know, my biggest, my biggest advantage, you know, as, as a fighter, one of my athletic ability, I don't think a lot of guys account for, you know, how fast I can move in and out. And, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people, I can make in-fight adjustments. And I don't know very many people that can do that. Uh, you know, my fight IQ is, is really high. And I think it comes from, you know, extensive wrestling background, you know, a lot of amateur boxing, kickboxing. And, you know, I had 20 amateur fights. And not many guys, uh, you know, have that many amateur fights. Um, that leading into professional, leading into being a professional. So, like, I'm comfortable in the cage. You know, I fought in the cage 36 times. So, uh, you know, there's really nothing, like, nothing anyone can do that's going to surprise me. And, uh, you know, I can make those adjustments, you know, mid-fight that, uh, you know, can, can put me on, the, put me on the, the winning side of things. You know, like, out of, uh, you know, out of 36 fights, I've won 34. Really, I think I've won 35. I don't think I've ever lost a professional. I've got one controversial split decision but i don't think i feel like i've ever lost as a pro um you know and my my ability to go out there and do whatever i have to do to win is and really what's going to separate me from him you know just i was going to ask you later but i'm going to ask you right now since you brought it up your that loss that you took the split decision loss uh, a while back does that bother you you brought it i, I listened in another interview you brought it up too and you said, yeah. like, or in sorry, it wasn't in an interview. It was after your fight, after your last fight in your t in your uh, in ring in cage. Sorry, post, uh, post, post fight. fight interview, right? In your post fight interview, I said I was, was fifteen one, but I should be sixteen and zero. Right. I believe that. I really do believe that, and I want people to know that. I want people to look at me like I'm an undefeated fighter, because uh, in my mind, I am. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people like look at that, look at that one, and they're like, "Well, uh, he has lost." And granted, I did, and I learned a lot from it, and. You know, now looking back, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, glad that it happened, but I also want people to know that, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know how to lose, and, uh, you know, when I'm in that cage, uh, you know, if I think I lost a round, you know, the next round, I'm coming back with, you know, everything I can, everything I have to, you know, make that up. How motivating is it for you? Like, like the loss sucks. Obviously, you don't want the loss. Nobody wants the loss. But how motivating is it? Like you said, like, like you've learned a lot from it and stuff. Is it something that you you constantly like remind yourself of so that you stay, you know, right, work like right. that for you? Yeah, I th I think you know it's 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 honestly done a lot for me in my in my career. You know that loss, uh, I kind I was kind of at a place, uh, you know, I was like seven eight and zero. I think I was kind of getting a little full of myself. And honestly, yeah. God, yeah, I was seven and zero, and uh, I was getting a little full of myself. Um, I just come off a, a big uh, KO win, and you know I wasn't I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't really striving to improve. I was kind of good with what where where I was at, and I felt like you know I could beat anyone with the game that I had. And you know that, that loss taught me that you know you shouldn't you should always like you should always one work work to always be better. But in a fight, you need to be looking you know for that finish all the time. You know, and in in that particular fight, I wasn't. I mean, I knew that I could go out and win all three rounds, and you know I kind of fought 
to win a decision. And now when I fight, I'm constantly looking for that opportunity to to put my opponent away. And uh, you know that's what you're going to see October 7th. I mean, I'm looking forward to this fight. It's going to be a really good one. You're also you're stepping into one of uh, probably. I would consider to be maybe even the most talented division in the UFC. Definitely one of them. Um, where do you feel like you you fit in in the, in the division? Where do you when you look at it and uh, where do you feel like you slide in? Uh, I'm I'm going to be in the top ten uh, within a year, and that's something that's a goal that I've had. You know, within a year I'd be in the top ten, and then within two years I'd fight for the title. You know, those are goals that I had. And I told myself that you know a long time ago. Like as soon as I'm in the UFC. You know, I'm I'm going I'm going after guys that you know I'm I'm gonna be the underdog in those fights, and I'm I'm going after those guys because I really do believe, you know, that I have what it takes to be a champion. I've trained with guys, you know, I'm not gonna name any specific names, but I've trained with like four out of the five guys in the top five in, mm-hmm. in that division. So you know, I've already kind of seen what what the best the absolute best in the world have to offer, and I know that you know I can compete with those guys and I can compete with anybody. And uh, all I need is the opportunity, and, you know, here I am. Um, speaking of opportunity, you know, after the fight, you always get a chance to say something, and they say closed mouths don't get fed. Um, will you have a name? Will you have somebody that you're looking to call out? Will you, or is that your style? Uh, I don't have a name. I mean, I'll let the UFC pick a name, but I'm going to tell them I want someone in the top ten. You know, that's that's part of, you know, something I've been telling myself. Is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like, you know, give me, give me somebody in the top ten. I, my next fight, I want someone in the top ten. I'm going to say, you know, uh, let's talk money. Give me someone in the top ten, you know, maybe even in Detroit. I was going to say. December 2nd. Uh, you took it, man. I was, that was going to be my last thing. I was going to ask you. is like, you know, you come out of here, no injuries, everything. You know, obviously you're hoping everything is smooth sailing. Get out of there early. Don't get paid by the hour. Um, would you want That's to right. uh, <laughs> Would you want to, uh, you want to fight in December in Detroit? Uh, it's a quick turnaround. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I, I'll see how this fight goes. I never want to. I never look over. You know, I'm not. I'm not uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to look past Tom Dukinwa, and I don't want to look past this fight. My my sole focus. You know, my life ends October seventh, and that's kind of the way I go into every fight uh, with that mentality. Because I've 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 made that mistake, and you know, uh, and you know, kind of like plan fights after fights, and you know, mm-hmm. you, even if you have like even if you have something as silly as a cut. Or like a sprain, or you know, a, a broken hand, or something like that. You know, that could be you know a six month layoff. So, no, I mean, uh, it's it's possible, but I, I won't say that. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's a definite. That's what I'm gonna do. It's not probable, but it's not impossible. <laughs> that's right. That's gotcha. right. Gotcha. Um, you know, uh, I wish you luck, man. I, I really enjoy watching Appreciate you fight, it. man, and uh, I wish Appreciate you all the it. luck in the world. Um, I do feel like this is that fight that, like we uh, was saying to you earlier, you're both a 15 and one, and I feel like this is the bump to the top 10 um, yep. with a win. I, I don't see how that doesn't happen. You'll be, you know, you have a great record. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy guy. Fights, uh, fights approaching. Thank you, and uh, we really appreciate it. We'll be tuned in. Awesome, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. 100, percent man. Have yourself a great night, and thanks a lot. Of course, of right. course. Thank you. Take care. The term like well-rounded gets thrown around like a little too often, you know what I mean? But this, in the case of the, of a uh, case of Stamen here, he, he he's like that perfect that mix where you just you just the striking is just just good enough, just crisp enough where where you, you have to respect it to a point where if he switches levels the way he does, you're going on your ass, you know. Well, yeah, you just look at him and you know there's power, right? Like he's yeah. built like a brick shit house. Yeah, tough guy. You know yeah, I'm not sure how like good Terry and Ware is. I haven't seen too much. I watched the the previous fight, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure how like to, to compare it, but. I mean, he he didn't look like he could do much against his wrestling, you know. Well, no, he was in tough. He's in tough. He's in there against a guy that's fourteen and one at the yeah, time. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? He's a like make no mistake. Right? Sometimes it's not that you're bad, but someone else is just really good. Yeah, and I think that might be the case, right? Cody Stamen is very good. This is a fight I'm really looking forward to. I love these prospect fights. Mm-hmm. We see two guys on the brink of like that next level, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah. And I feel like, that, like I said, I feel like this that's is the one one of those ones where you're watching the you're watching the pay per view with people and you're like, this is the fight. This, this was this like you know fight. what this was. This was like Garbrandt Almeida, like one of those, yeah. like in a similar way. Yeah. That was more for a title, like yeah, push yeah, for yeah, a title yeah, yeah. shot, but like the same idea, right? You got these two guys, and it's like it's going to mm-hmm. be one of you. Yeah, yeah, you know the talent level is so high where you don't really want to take a guess. You yeah, want to take a stab. Right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, you know what? Really excited for our next one. We got Volkan Ozdemir coming up. Vulcan, he's getting called out by champs. He's got, <laughs> you know, in one year, in under a year, 
It's the craziest seven months or eight months. What has it been, like eight months? Fighter of the year. That's yeah. it. It's insane. Gets my vote. Fighter of the year. Yeah. Stud. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, I I can't think of anyone who's had a better f- first year yeah. in the UFC than Volkan Ozdemir ever. I can't really think of anybody. Not even. I don't think Conor McGregor. It's had. just how casual it's been. He's just like right. goes in there. It's, it's a minute less than a I mean. minute. It, it was even two or three years before, like or two years whatever before yeah. Conor was like a real. I feel like Volkan like has had a better year than even Conor had in yeah, this his first tough, year. His toughest matchup was OSP so far. You know, he's smashing people. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, I can't wait to talk to Volkan. We'll be right back. We'll have him with us. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great conversation. What's up, Fight House fans? We are back with none other than Volk and Ozdemir. What's going on, Volk? And welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, it was a pleasure the first time, and can't wait to be you know, to see what's up today. Yeah, man. How's everything going? How are you been? Um, I'm I'm been doing great, uh, as you can as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now uh, I'm back on training. I was in Europe for a while. I did a, a PR tour with the UFC and. Uh, I was all over the place, and now I'm back in Florida training again. You know how uh, how how has it been getting used to that? Getting used to everyone knowing who you are now. You're doing all this stuff with the UFC, these media things. Like, how have you adapted to that? It's been a very short period of time for you. Your rise has been quick. Okay. Yeah, it's true. It's been um, three fights in the. Yeah. I mean, uh, in six months, and now, especially. With the last fight, uh, since Jimmy was a top ranked guy, mm-hmm. the number three in the world, and uh, the fight was so fast, so it made a, a huge change. You know, the UFC 214 was one of the best card fight card uh, for years now, and uh, that was the comeback of John Jones, the unification of the belt, and I was the first th- first fight of the pay per view card. It was my first pa- pay per view fight. So it was definitely a new and a big uh, change. It was a big moment for you. Come yes, a, it was. Come a long way in a short period of time. You no, know, you brought up yes. John Jones. So let me ask you right now, since you brought up, what do you think of this whole situation, man? Um, I don't want to talk too much right now because we don't we don't know too right. too much details yet. Uh, he didn't make any statements. Um, yeah, we just don't know uh, how long will be the suspension. It could be two years or four years, I think. And um, and so I'm just waiting uh, to 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 know more before I can talk. Definitely. So um, so we'll see, we'll see. But um, I think that's uh, really disappointing. Definitely disappointing. Definitely. Um, you know, it kind of opens up the door for you even even more than it was already opened up for you. Um, with just opportunities now because now it's you know what fight to make and, and, and you're originally calling out Gus has anything come to you uh, about the Gustafsson fight have you heard anything or? no I was trying to to find him for the main event in Poland the UFC uh, in Poland but um, I didn't get no answer and I think he's just focused on the, um, a title fight which I understand but um, I think I thought first of all that me and him fighting first will be a great fight because uh, he gave value to a title fight. Cormier just lost to John Jones. The situation was a little bit weird back in the t- uh, back in the day because mm-hmm. we didn't know what's going to happen with the you know the doping violation with John Jones and sure. Cormier. What's going to happen with the belt? So that was the fight that made the most most sense, and also it's going to um, increase the value of the title fight. But now. Um, I just heard Cormier called me out on the social media, and uh, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's pretty amazing. It's, uh, it's, uh, I feel really blessed, humbled, because uh, the champions, you know, mentioned my name, is ready to fight me, and, you know, showing me a challenge there. So, I'm, you know, I'm ready to accept it. Does your life get any better? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, things yeah. go fast. Now you got the champion saying, "Hey, I'll fight Vulcan." Like things just yeah. fall into place for you, man. It's T- just 2017 is a great year, and uh, 2018 will be better, definitely. Yeah, you know, speaking of, so you know, you now you got Cormier calling you. If you take the belt out of the equation, like obviously you want the belt, so you want to fight who has the belt, obviously. Mm-hmm. But if you take that out of the equation, which is the more interesting fight for you? A fight with Gus think- or DC? I think because I like DC actually, I like him. He's a 
I just met him uh, briefly in uh, in a hotel yeah. in uh, Anaheim, and uh, I think I like him. You know, uh, he's cool. Uh, he's a great champ. Uh, he's respectful, and um, so yeah, I guess I will rather fight Gustafsson than DC if I have to choose. But um, but um, DC has the belt. He's been beating everybody else, so he's the man to you know. He's on my line. You know, I I don't know if you were you looking at at DC at all as a potential opponent, or, or in your head were you not there yet and kind of focusing on other people? And then, how do you see a matchup with DC? Do you start looking at him like that? Oh my fight, I, I saw them the same. Uh, the same way for me. It's uh, all about the first round knockout. That's it. Eh? It's all about the first. That's, that's <laughs> that's it. It. <laughs> you don't need. You don't need to think about too much game plan and two different <laughs> stuff. You know, I know. I know. I have a great knockout power, and um, it's all about how I, I can apply it. So um, it might take a round, two round, three round, or even five round now, because now it's gonna be all about five round. Because I guess I'm gonna have all main events, all the title fights. So, so now uh, it's all about uh, how to apply this. So, we'll tell, see. Tell me the truth, man. Are you ever sitting or like all the lights are off and you know your fiance is sleeping and you're just in the living room like I can't believe all this has happened. Like I can't. No, actually, no, not really. I I, I didn't have time to 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 really sit and and uh, and think about everything and i don't really want to do it okay. because then maybe i will be complacent maybe or uh i don't know overwhelmed by everything so um, so right now i just you know enjoy the ride because i still enjoy it but just put all my focus on it has it been different for you to walk around it what's your, what's the response been um for you in, in your home home country switzerland when you go back there um, have you become more more noticeable? Like, have you become a, a, a not a celebrity, maybe a celebrity in Switzerland? Have people noticed you more? So it definitely, uh, yeah, it's like night and day since last time. Because last time Misha fight was uh, really because he was also on the same time zone. Yeah. So a lot of people followed it. Even people that don't really watch MMA or don't really watch fighting at all. And uh, so he was, uh, it was huge already. Yeah. But now, since he was um, the that big fight, and uh, I was fighting the number three rank in the world, and Misha was also the starter because he was uh, my second UFC fight. He was yeah. a big fight, and he was also, like I said, the same time zone. Now there is even more people that that, that stayed and watched the next fight. And uh, the media talked even more about it, and yeah. a lot of different media. So of course now the people see me more li like a personality or like somebody a little bit not famous, famous, but I mean like uh, you know like uh, on the scene. Recognizable. You know? So yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's yeah, it's a uh, it's a way different. And what, have you had any crazy experiences, man, with people like running up to you? Like, does it catch you off guard if people like you know come up to you like, hey, man, like? Have you had any funny experiences? Uh, n nothing funny yet, because um, they they were really everybody was really respectful. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's true that I haven't been a uh, one single place where I didn't have any, at least one guy just you know like smiling at me, just <laughs> waving, uh, showing me uh, you know a thumbs up, yeah. or just talking to me, taking pictures. So um, not like ev all the all the all the all the place, but always like one. Or uh, two, three guys, you know, uh, each in different place I went. Does that feel so? Is that, it's, a, is that a cool feeling for you? Like when that happens, it's kind of like for now. For now, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All, we'll see you later. But yeah, uh, it's all good yeah, when it's it new, is, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet man. So listen, you know what? Uh, let's assume that the, that the UFC gives you this fight with DC, and and, and I I think. Personally, I know you're a humble guy, so you probably aren't going to say it. But with the year you've had, I think you deserve that fight more than anyone else. If I look around, you know, you knocked off number three, Gus. He's been, he's fought, but he's been on and off, right? He's had layoffs, and you know, it's been what it has been. How do you? I think, think he was injured. I think he was injured on his back. That's why he had okay. some setback. But um, he also had two shots already. Um, yeah, absolutely. He's getting old, and I understand that that's his chance to go. That's why fighting me will be just stupid. 
And um, <laughs> no, I mean, like, if I was his management, I will tell him, don't fight this guy. He's dangerous and uh, yeah. he's worth. He has. He doesn't bring you any value, you know. So yeah. you're just gonna be a loser of fighting him. And um, and um, that's why I understand. That's why I'm saying I understand that. So now I want, I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on DC because he called me out. So if I have a chance to go right away for the belt, I, I might take it. Sure. So yeah, he had the two run already. He lost twice, but that was really close. That was two huge fights. Yeah. Uh, I think both were a split decision. I think. I can't remember. And um, and uh, so yeah, you see that, that he's a tough competitor. He's a tough guy. But I think the division need, need the fresh blood, and uh, that's what I bring. Yeah, yeah. You know, how, do you do you st- uh, like when you see DC and you and you realistically break it down? Do you feel like that's a knockout? Is that a first round knockout? Or do you think yes, he sticks? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Um, you listen, Volcan. I want to thank you, man. You always give us uh, a great interview, man. You always make time, and I'm I'm really appreciative of it. Uh, it's been crazy to follow your journey, man. Because the first time I talked to you, it was like you were getting fights canceled for the Titan FC yeah, heavyweight true, yeah. title, you know. So it's been so cool to kind of like be able to talk with yeah. you and have these uh, these conversations as you you move your way to the title shot. Thank you so much. I wish you all the luck in the world, brother. And I hope to see you compete for the title. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Hundred percent, man. You. Have a great night. Enjoy, bud. You too. Bye. All right. Take care. Guy, Volking, is that what we came up with earlier? Volking, that's my guy. <laughs> no time is amazing, too. <laughs> no time. You know, with the way he walked around, he was pointing out his wrist. I was like, I love Volking. Dude, that's terrifying. Like, uh, imagine like everybody else is like, Dan, even Daniel must be like, wait a minute, do I even want to get in there again? You know what I mean? It's like, I already kind of won the, the moral battle between John Jones. You know what I mean? Well, Every, all the fans love DC now. It's just like, do I want to get in there and just get starched by some guy that just came out of nowhere, you know? He's right, I, and that, that's cra- and that's, that's why I love the guy so much. It's like he's so humble that, to say that, say that the, the, to break down the Gus situation like yeah. that, because he's absolutely right. Yeah, it's, it's a hard. mistake to get in there yeah, with him, and if he wins, the name is, is when people are gonna know who Volcan is in a matter of time. And they already yeah, yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. But that what he's saying is one hundred percent true, and that you gotta respect that. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. He's being an he's just assessing the situation with an honest, honest yeah. viewpoint, right? Yeah. And he just he can't he won't say a bad word, you know, or not necessarily a bad word, but he like. I don't know. I always appreciate people like that. He's, he's like, I like, I like DC. You know, he doesn't <laughs> say he doesn't like us. He's, he's like, I, I like DC. You know what I mean? You yeah, have to kind yeah. of fill the blanks in. Right. He's a, no, he's a good, he's a good dude. Um, it's cr- it, it, when I say that it's been crazy to follow. Cause like, it really has like when I started doing like the, you know, interviews and stuff like that, like he was like within like the first month I was doing it, like my first interview with yeah. Volkan and it was like he, you know, he was struggling to find fights. Like no one would fight him. Well, you now know? you know. Now you know why. <laughs> right? He's like you're knocking the jaw off people at 205. Yeah. yeah. But I think the biggest thing is that he's fought at heavyweight his entire career. He's 11 and one. He had like uh, I, f- I forget how many. I think nine knockouts. Or I think. Yeah. Um, but what? he can ex- when he steps into exchange, he can take the shot. Yeah. But he's hitting like a truck. When Anthony Johnson says you can hit hard, you know what I mean. You better back right. away. Back away. Right. You know what I'm saying. So. Yeah. Um, like I just I, I'm always for that underdog story. This is yeah. like the underdog yeah, story. This is of the like, year. I was this say, is like under a this year. This is the reason why we did we started doing this. Yeah. It's, to be honest, it's like you want to be like, oh yeah, I'm here to do journalism for this, this, and that. It's like no, you want to you want to follow the ride. You want to be there. You want to be the guy early on. You know, certain fighters, exp- you know, exposing certain yeah, people. Well, just follow their experience, follow Ooh. the journey, have your own journey too. Yeah. Like we're doing our own thing. Yeah. To have our own little. uh you know, journey through through the game and stuff like that. Just interviewing fighters and having fun and doing mm-hmm. podcasts and like, really enjoyable stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's huge. But you never think it happens this quickly. Oh, that's what makes it crazy. Yeah. It's like yeah. literally we're talking about like seven months or six, seven months or so. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nuts. I'm never betting against him again. Let's just put it that way. Never. It's crazy. I never. Not that I ever did, but. And like when you start to think about like oh like the, the you know people like Gus strikes I'm like he's. He got re- he lost. Uh, I think in Bellator early in his career, he got wrestled. That was his only loss. He like he's never been like knocked out. He's never been he lost a stand up battle. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He will. I, I believe he beats Gus. I believe it is a first round knockout. DC, I believe, is a bit tougher. It's two completely d- different striking styles. <laughs> I love his I confidence though too. Yeah, it's yeah. like. <laughs> two, sorry, I cut you off there. Two completely no, okay. different striking. I'm styles. I'm just saying that they're two. I mean, Gus and him would be two, two, two completely different striking styles. One use a, use li- likes to use the range and, and use kicks and all that stuff. Yeah. But Volcan just seems to find a way to get in close. And when he gets in close, because it's just he, when sleek. they exchange, it's different. 
Yeah. He's felt it. They've never felt it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a different thing. It's a shame because I would actually love to see because it, it would have matter if if John never got popped, then we would have seen we fight. would have eventually seen Volkan and fight. Jones. That's what I'm saying. I should have asked him if he would have felt if he felt like robbed by by not because mm-hmm. you know what like the truth is like John's the king. Oh, I think I think he showed the fact that you got your answer and the fact that way he answered the question. You know, he was very respectful yeah. and said you know he didn't want to talk about something that. But hasn't you know what I'm saying though? It's yet. like if you're in that division and you win the title, like. There's always going to be, well, could he have beat Jones? Could yeah. he have beat Jones? You know, they're always going to have to answer that question. Mm-hmm. So you, you're kind of robbed in a way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you if he goes out and knocks out DC, they're like, well, John knocked out DC. Like, sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he'll always have to answer that question of like, is he better than Jones? Because he would beat Jones. And you'll always have the people that think Jones is the GOAT that are like, yeah. you know, it's, it's no hard. way. You know? It's hard to convince people that don't know that the specifics and like they don't follow or, hardcore, you know. Or just people that, you know, it's not their, f- they're not wrong, right? It's, it's a close fight. So it's just people yeah. who side that way. You mm-hmm. know, that's what they feel, right? But you'll never be able to find out because of um, <laughs> Mr. Jones's <laughs> indiscretions. <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Right? Yeah. Um, listen, we're going to close out the night. We're going to come back. we got Emmanuel Sanchez. Um, he's going to get ready to take on Daniel Strauss. That's going to be a great fight. Great fight. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to him about uh, Daniel's Choice eagerness to, to dump him on his f- effing neck. <laughs> we're going to see how he feels about that. Uh, we're going to talk to him. Stay with us. It's going to be a great conversation. Manuel Sanchez coming up. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with Emmanuel Sanchez, who's getting ready to take on Daniel Strauss. Uh, what's going on, Emmanuel? Welcome back to the show. Thanks for joining us, brother. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. Pleasure's ours. Uh, how's everything been? How's your prep going, man? How's uh, training? Going fantastic. You know, I'm just uh, getting ready to go out and put on a show, fight of the lifetime. Definitely, man. I, I know uh, last time you said you you had been nursing some injuries and stuff like that uh, after the last fight. You said in your hands you're having some issues. Uh, did you get all that stuff worked out in the, in the time off? Yeah, thankfully, you know, uh, there's always there's always something, man. I'm always dealing with something, but you know, thank God that uh, I've been staying healthy. You know, I just gotta stay on top of it with hearing uh, my chiropractor and going to cryotherapy therapy, and you know, just staying on top of my overall health and well being. You know, uh, can't be uh, 22 forever, and uh, it takes a toll on us. You know, you want to train really, really hard, but you also need to stay on top of your recovery to be able to train really hard again throughout the whole week, you know? <laughs> so uh, just being able to stay on top of my overall health and it has enabled me to train uh, and go the extra mile. Sweet. So uh, so you're approaching this fight, everything's good. You, you were able to take care of all the nagging injuries then? That, yeah, good. absolutely, man. You know, I still got some things uh, that are aching, but they ache, but ain't nothing going to break me, so I'm ready. Yeah, what were you thinking, man, when, it, when they, uh, they gave you the call and it was Strauss? Uh, I knew it was going to be Strauss, man. It was just crazy. I kind of just, you know, dreamt it and believed it on my own. I uh, was thinking and looking in the picture. I'm like, who else could they potentially give me? You know, who else on the roster right now is there that is, you know, in the title picture or a former champion and everyone else, you know, being booked and seeing the route they're going on, you know, who's fighting who. I'm like, all right, they got to give me the winner or, I mean, excuse me, the loser or the winner of uh, Strauss versus Pitbull the fourth time. So seeing how Pitbull came on to Victor and I knew that they would give Whitechill the title shot again, I knew that they would give me. So how do you feel about the matchup? I think it's awesome, man. You know, um, another legend in my eyes, another uh, former champion. So this is this is a huge fight, man. You know, I'm ready to go out and uh, make a statement. You know, I'm the uh, going to be the legend and former champion slayer. This is awesome. You know, uh, I've been facing guys that uh, got twice as many fights as I do and twice as much as experience, and I get to go out and show the world, show Bellator, show the fans, everyone that uh, who I am and what I can do against you know the elite of the elite. Absolutely. Um, you know, you look great in your last fight uh, against. Anna. Uh, Galveo, uh, a really good performance. You're able to keep him at the distance. How do you how do you implement that to keep Strauss off you? How are you going to keep the distance? Like, what are the things you're going to have to do well to be able to to maintain that distance? 
Man, that's the best thing you said in my hands, boxing, you know, and, uh, you know, being able to fight. Uh, just uh, don't let them get in. That's the biggest thing, you know. I'm uh, Vasily Lemonchenko, be the matador out there. I go out and uh, I'm in and I'm out. And I don't, uh, you've seen in the last two performances, I've taken no damage, not a scratch on me after I leave. And even though that they've gone the distance, it's, it's gone my way. And I've been able to dictate the pace and where the fight goes and, uh, fight my fight and dance my dance, you know? I'm just dancing to those lights, having a, having the time of my life, man. You know, I don't think of winning or losing. I just think of having fun and getting the job done. Is it freeing when you approach it with that kind of train of thought? Because I imagine that's something you have to get to, like, throughout your career. Um, you know, with, with time comes that sort of, like, wisdom, I guess, towards the game, right? So does it... Yeah, Absolutely. So does it make it a little bit more freeing when you're able to go out there with that train of thought, like just not think about those things and worry about those things? Yeah, you know, because previously in a lot of other fights sometimes, you know, you watch your opponent so much and yeah. you get so wrapped up and not, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. He trains with this guy now, he trains with that guy too, he's been doing this, and it's like, eh, who cares, you know? I mean, <laughs> he's another man, he's another human being. He can punch and kick like I do and wrestle and, you know, defend submissions, go for submissions. It's men. This is my everyday life that I've been doing for the past, you know, 10 years now. So, you know, it's uh, it, it's just another day in the office for me. You know, uh, I know what this man is capable of. I respect everything that he's done and who he is, but I do know I can go out there and come out on top. You know, for you, uh, does this feel like a contender fight for you, him being an ex-champ? Like, you got to feel that if you go out there and dominate that, that leads you right to the winner of probably Michael and Pitbull, no? Absolutely. You know, uh, I've already faced it. I mean, there's no really rankings or anything. Yeah. I mean, maybe to the public eye, maybe to Bellator, who knows. But it's all about uh, entertainment, man. And uh, it's not about who's the most deserving or who's got the biggest win streak, whatever. It's uh, who's going to put on the most exciting fight. Who's going to sell tickets, put butts in seats, and... You know, there's no one else uh, on the roster that I can think of other than me. You know, who else has uh, faced everyone that's been in the title picture? You know, I faced Curran, I faced Caldwell, yeah. faced Georgie, Baicho, and now I'm facing Strauss. And then uh, short of Pitbull, you know, I've uh, I faced all the top dogs. So, you know, these are guys that have been uh, in Bellator for quite some time now. They've been Bellator mainstays. They've made a name for themselves in Bellator. They've been tournament champions. All the above, you know. So, uh, you know, it, uh, to me, it's just going out there and proving that uh, I, can, I can beat them all. So now, th going, continue with the train of thought that this is a contender fight. Then, um, and you and you go in there and assuming that you win this fight, you um, would you rather have a like a, a first shot at Pitbull and, and you know a fresh face than that way, or a rematch with Weichel? What would you prefer? Um. You know, man, uh, someone just asked me that today, too. But, you know, there's been so many rematches, you know. Yeah. Strauss and Kern have danced with each other many times. Strauss and Pitbull, you know, and Pitbull and Curran have danced, you know, more than once. So it's like, for me, would I face Virtual again? Yeah. I, I'd love to get that back to prove that, you know, I'm better than that I was robbed. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is because, uh, you know, he knows he didn't beat me, but he really did. You know, the judges gave it to him. I, I feel like I got robbed, but I didn't get my hand raised, so I didn't do my job. So I'm not going to live with that for the rest of my life, you know, and be butthurt about it. I just uh, learned from it. Onward and upward, I know what i got to do now is to go out and uh, never let that happen again. I'm not a point fighter. I always look to go out and dominate and finish. And uh, would someday we, uh, him and I, go out and fight again, potentially? Yeah. So, you know, the option is always there. If not, you know, uh, you know, who knows? I think it's going to be something bigger. If he doesn't come out and win for the belt, no. You know, but if he's going out and he wins the belt, I think it's a perfect, uh, what a perfect picture, you know what I mean? Definitely. Him versus I for the belt. Yeah, it'd be a good one, man. Definitely a good tilt worth, definitely one I'd tune into. Um, the, uh, however, the guy in front of you right now, Daniel Strauss, you know, he recently made uh, the move over to work with Henry Hooft. Does that change anything for you? What do you expect to see from him in the cage? Oh, uh, I expect him to just come forward, you know. Uh, that's always been his style. So is, he's uh, he's always been without Henry or if he was trained with whoever, you know. I knew 
he would still come forward. He still be aggressive. He still throw down. He loves to throw down. That's you know the kind of fighter he is. You know, and that's why he's put on some of the most exciting fights in Bellator. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know. I've already seen one man who's uh, you know been the change and trained with Henry and Pat Curran, and we've seen everyone else you know who is trained with uh, Henry as well. So, very respectable coach, amazing coach. Uh, I, I like this. I like his work. I, I've seen what he's done. But uh, to me, you know, we uh, I know the secret behind it. You know, my coach is. Uh, uh, a striking expert himself. Yep. He's been doing this his life as well. You know, I train with the best in the world in Duke Rufus. And uh, we've, I've gone out and faced many different styles. Karate style, taekwondo, boxing, kickboxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, wrestling. You know, he's yep. got the recipe for any kind of fighter who, you know, whatever they bring to the table, we're ready for. So, you know, uh, I'm not no fool. Do I know I can go out there and uh, stand and bang? Of course. But right. why uh, fight in his world and his realm, you know? Um, I know I'm going to go out and take the fight to him, but uh, fight the way I need to fight, whether it be in the inside, the outside, uh, whatever I need to do to go out there and be victorious, I'm going to do. I know he, had, he he seemed to be bringing a different sort of intensity this time around. I, we had him on the show last week, and uh, I, I was asking him about your reach advantage. I had said to him, you know, he should have a sizable reach advantage on you, I believe. Um, and he said, if that's the case, then he's getting dumped on his neck and he's getting beat the F up type of thing. He had a, a very different intensity about him. Um, are you expecting that knowing that he's coming off losing the title and stuff? Are you expecting him to come out the gate with like a, a real intensity about him? Yeah, of course. You know, he just lost his title and that's got to, you know, light a fire under him, yeah. under his ass and want to come out and prove a point. You know, I mean, I feel like, he had that maybe with Henry Corrales as well, fighting a guy making his debut. But uh, I'm not Pitbull and I'm not Henry Corrales, man. You know, I'm someone and uh, that brings something completely different to the table, mm-hmm. completely different than Curran, completely different than Pitbull Corrales, you know, or anyone that he's ever faced, you know. So I, you know, the reach advantage, the experience advantage, you know, that's all just stuff on paper. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's who shows up fight night. And who shows up with the style to come out and be victorious? So, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not banking on, uh, oh, hey, yeah, I'm taller or I'm longer yeah. or I can go. Uh, you know, it, it's a fight. I know he's ready to throw down, and he has. He's gone five for hundreds. He's uh, he fought some of the best in the world, and he's put on some of the most exciting fights. So I have the utmost respect for him. This guy, you know, he really is. He's truly a legend, and been one of the top names and faces in Bellator for a long time. So. You know, I'm uh, I'm ready for this test and this challenge, and I'm ready to go out and pass this test. Hey, listen, man, you're a le- you know you're a legend in the Bellator featherweight division as well, man. You've been around a long, long time, um, and that was one thing I noticed too. You guys are two of the guys that have been around relatively the longest, um, had a lot of fights. Have you been eyeing him as potential opposition, like the over time, or is that something you, you just deal with as it comes? Oh, um, you know, potentially I felt that that was something that was going to come. You know, the the second I signed the contract yeah. of my new deal, being in Bellator, I'm like, damn, I'm in Bellator now, and I'm going to make my debut soon. This is going to be awesome. You know, I had an opportunity on the undercard, and they gave me someone who was, a, you know, a local card, actually in the same uh, in the same arena, Oklahoma. That's where I made my debut. So Oklahoma's a special place to me. You know, I've actually I had my first two Bellator fights there. Nice. And um, when I uh, when I knew I was going to fight and you know be in the featherweight division, I think Curran and uh, Pitbull were fighting again, and uh, I was watching them closely. And I didn't know you never know when they were going to throw you in there with them. I mean, could it be too much too soon? Who knows? All I know and knew was that I was going to be ready. Because sure enough, you know, uh, I thought it was going to be, you know, one fight at a time. They give me, you know, fights yeah. to build me up. And boom, sure enough, I get current on short notice, you know, in an only my third Bellator fight. Yeah. And at the time, on my third Bellator fight, this guy's got more fights in Bellator than I had professional fights. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, and then right after that, you know, I'm fighting, oh, boom, you know, two UFC veterans. And then, you know, for, uh, and then boom, again, you know, uh, Guys who fought were fighting for the title, or were supposed to fight for the title, and now two former champions now in a row. So, yeah, and then I'd like to say, you know, I'm coming out and uh, still uh, coming out on my own. You know, I still have yet to scratch the surface of uh, 
what my true potential is and what I what I truly can do. Absolutely, I mean, you know, I'm really looking forward to see to see what the future holds for you. You're 27, you're you're just hitting the your prime. You know, you got a lot of you Absolutely. got a lot of experience already under your belt, so you're seasoned in the cage. Um, I think you're, you're you know you're getting ready to make a splash in the division, man. I'm really looking forward to watching it. Uh, how do you see this fight ending? Before I let you go, man. I'm looking to put him out in the you know in the first two rounds, first or second round. You know, I know. Okay, uh, people can say, you know, "Oh, I'm a third round fighter. I don't start I start strong." You know, it's mm-hmm. like uh, I like to say I start strong. It's one thing, yes, starting right away because I've never been tired after a fight. So, do I need to go more? Yeah, I should throw more combinations. Just be like Pacquiao out there, you know. Yeah. Best thing I can uh, take my example is to go out there. If I'm the jackrabbit, I'm the energizer bunny who doesn't get tired. Then just go out there and uh, throw down and have fun, you know. I've just never been reckless. I've never just wanted to go out and bite down on the mouthpiece and chuck on the cheap seats and throw the ghetto walkers or nothing. Yeah, it makes yeah. for an exciting fight, but you have a you know a short career or you know and take the toll on the body. Definitely. I don't want. I've never broken my hand. I don't want to. You know, I, I've been tied. I've been head butted, and I don't ever want to feel like that way again, man. You know, I don't want to fight hard, fight smart, technical aggression, just like Triple G. You know, I just Amen. get it going right away. You know, I'm. Uh, we know what we're both in there for. Just, uh, of course, I want to get in and get out. You know, why go all three rounds when you can stop them in one? And you're not getting so, paid by the hour. I just yeah. said that to someone earlier. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we get paid the same. We don't yes. get paid for overtime. So, right, exactly. You know, uh, uh, paycheck cash the same, man, by knockout, by submission, you know. So uh, we're looking for the finish, of course. You know, uh, that's, uh, that's always what I'm looking for. And outclassing, outfighting, outdominating my opponent. So... I, uh, you know, I know he's dangerous everywhere. I know he can wrestle, he can strike, he can throw down, man, he, he, he can submit. But uh, I'm ready for it all, and I got it all in my own academy. So I'm ready to go out, and uh, I know what he can do to me, but he doesn't know what I can do to him. Hey, there it is. We'll end it like that. Uh, listen, I want to thank you, man, for giving us your time. I know you're a busy guy. Fight's approaching. Uh, I really look forward to seeing the fight, and I wish you all the luck in the world, brother. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate it big time. Thank you for the interview. Absolutely, man. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, too. All right, bro. Bye. Just like, just like Volcan and going through that whole, like, you know, the process of seeing him develop over the last eight months or yeah. nine months, S- similar to, like, this featherweight division, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like you see all these guys. and I mean, he's, uh, Sanchez has been around for a while, but other guys, you know what I mean? She's starting to take shape, and uh, it's awesome. Yeah, well, and if you just look and look what's coming up the gate right behind it, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you got, uh, like, such so many young faces coming up, early 20s, like, such like crazy futures, like, so long left, you know, a decade, yeah. more than a decade, 15 years, yeah. if they're healthy. Yeah, the, the, you know, you, you got have, AJ Gallagher, Williams, yep. you know, how many other guys you got uh, uh, coming up? behind the it. UFC has market share right now so it, it, it just gets by default it gets all these guys to come and, and fight for them but like if the UFC doesn't keep up with their, their their prospect like management making sure that you're getting some of the best guys I think that's why Dana White's Listen. done that's why Dana White has he's not it's not a fool Dana White seems like a fool sometimes but like he's not a fool that's why he came out with this contender series shows because he knew that, that the ultimate fighter wasn't doing it anymore it wasn't enough no, yeah, yeah. it wasn't enough bodies coming through you know what I mean and then the Pelotor's been catching up well yeah and people didn't want to live in the house and like go through this yeah whole experience like this is like a one-off right like you come in you train at your own gym you do your thing you come in and uh and, and you know you win yeah you do it impressively you got a contract if yeah. you don't you don't and it's just a where even the wear and tear on the body it's just craziness but that, so that's why you're seeing this contender series it's just you're seeing competition which is great because that, yeah. that, that for the longest time that there wasn't any man you know what just clued into me though bellator has a crazy good featherweight division it is man yeah. The Pico's in the division now too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's 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 that's a good division. Like you're talking about UFC, but then I, was, I just I was I went like well, while you're talking, I was looking at the UFC list. But you still exactly prospects. But you you have guys like Ortega. You have you still have I mean, Stevens isn't even really like he's not really even like peaked yet. You know what I mean? There's lots Stevens of guys on the, to me. Stevens to me is, is like the, a great gatekeeper. It's, yeah, that's no, I know I what you're saying. saying. I don't but think I'm he'll saying. be a champion, but he's definitely going to be like a top five. You I know? was thinking the exact same thing you were, but I went uh, straight to the, the yeah. rankings. You start seeing the guys on the UFC, yeah. like top 10, you're, if I, top 15, you're just like, okay, yeah, there's, there's still a difference, but that gap is closing yeah, yeah, on yeah. a daily basis. 
Oh, they still yeah. The, well, the featherweight division stacked. Yeah, so many good, so yeah. many good fighters. Yeah, but like you said, a lot of them are in the in, are a little older. You have like Lamas and you have Frankie. Rodriguez, but uh, still, yeah, Bellator's oh, catching up. Rodriguez, that guy's a beast. That's what I'm saying. So when you look at it, you're like, okay, now you have to, have to pay respect to like UFC, but at the same time, Bellator is catching up. That's there's no well, doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, they got they kind of well, they got some good. The point is that you have something coming up. Yeah, behind it, right? Like Strauss, all these guys can't fight forever. Yeah. You know? I, he's been on the show, so I'm not going to obviously I'm talking about to some degree, but I really do think that AJ McKee is going to be a superstar. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of time. Whether it's under a Bellator banner, or UFC banner, he's going to be like a super superstar. And I mean that by, I mean that like specifically. I choose my words carefully. Yeah, he just has to keep doing what he does, right? I think. Do you know what I feel? I feel like for AJ, the biggest challenge for him is going to be himself. Yeah. I feel like motivation might be an issue for AJ. Not an issue. I don't want to say it's an issue, but. Yeah. Sometimes he, you talk to him, like, like, he said to me on a couple of occasions, like, a, about, you know, gaps in his early parts of his, like, his career so young still, right? It's yeah. crazy, but to think, but in, even in, like, the earlier parts of his career, he was like, I just wasn't motivated. Yeah. You know what I mean? That could be a problem, right? If you can't sure. be Especially self-motivated. To, be, but, to stay champion, too, you have to have that cr- crazy amount of motivation. And fair, f- in fairness... You know, he now we see he's looking at history and breaking records, and yeah, so he's motivated. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's so just I'm not saying he's to not what motivated. degree. I'm just saying is he is he capable of being self motivated? Yeah, the whole time. And then you get Pico running like behind you, just pushing you every day. Well, the, I don't know if they'll fight. They're like family. Well, I'm saying either way, the, he, his I mean Pico's not going anywhere, and no, he's no, going to no. push him. Is what I'm saying. Not not yeah, going to yeah, yeah. fight, but you got to keep up with well, that level of intensity. Too. You got other guys coming out. Yeah, man, it's exciting. Yeah, it's good. It was another good week. Excellent. Uh, I really enjoyed it. We uh, we'll be back next week. We'll have a <laughs> bunch of great guests. We don't have anybody booked quite yet, do we? No, no, not yet, not yet. But nobody we will. locked in. We'll get a uh, we'll get a few people. Yeah, and uh, we'll make it happen. Uh, thanks everyone who, who took the time to uh, to listen in. Really appreciate it. Thank Volcan and Volcan. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, it's just that his run is just insane. It's just insane. Like every time I keep thinking about it, I'm like, this is just craziness that he's on the show right now. And he's, <laughs> I had to, I had to correct my statement. I was thinking we were saying earlier. I thought I put him as the number three like uh, ranked light heavyweight. And I was like, no, he's number two because again, you don't include the champion, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, what a crazy episode. I'm, we're, I'm proud of man. Like, we've been doing this for like you know, was it just over half a year now? And yeah, and it's just. It's, it's doing well, you know. You have a lot of good conversations, you know. Like even tonight, like you know, we had a we had, I lo- I love the lineup tonight. You know, Sabina, yeah. uh, Sabina Mazo came on the show. Yeah. Um, Cody Stamen, Vulcan Ozdemir, Manuel yeah. Sanchez, like four great conversations. You know, yeah. we had a really good ones. Had had some good laughs. Uh, I want to thank all those guys for coming on the show, and most of the, most importantly, you know, thanks to the people that uh, to take the time to watch. Really appreciate it, guys. We'll be back next week. We will have. Uh, new guests and we'll have some good conversations but for now it's me Jason Sutcliffe and Tristan Ketty and we're signing off thanks and have another good night guys take care